life has too many ordinary people. Life has got ordinary people doing ordinary things, living ordinary lives. Ordinary people accomplishing ordinary things is the order of the day. It would appear like standing out is just a preserve of the few. It looks like the bulk majority of people are going to end up living just ordinary lives, doing ordinary things, accomplishing ordinary stuff. And the exceptionalism and being exceptional is just a preserve of the very few. Just the very few. People end up dying ordinary deaths and they are forgotten. I was taught by my mentor that ordinary does not sell. I was taught by my mentors that people are not attracted to ordinary anymore. People are attracted to something that is exceptional. And so for the number of weeks that God is going to allow me to just uh, talk on this subject, uh, I trust that this subject is going to uh, bring the exceptionalism in you because I believe you are uniquely created by Jehovah God. Uh, I, I just believe that there's, you are so exceptional because you, there's no one who's like you. Your eyeballs are not like any other. Your fingerprints are not like any other. Your rationale is not like any other. You're just unique. You're an exceptional person. And the worst thing that can happen to you is for you to live life uh, as an ordinary being, achieving ordinary things, and just living just the same way people live, uh, and not really getting to a place where you are exceptional. This morning, we are going to look at Moses. Moses was no ordinary man. Moses was the greatest man in the Old Testament. Moses got the Ten Commandments from God. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Moses led the Israelites out of captivity and slavery in Egypt. Moses was a friend of God. Moses spoke to God face to face. The Bible says that God says uh, Moses was not like the other prophets or the other servants he had because God spoke to Moses face to face. He was a friend of God. It was Moses who gathered uh, Abraham's extended family and formed a nation with a structure and a code of law given to him on Mount Sinai. Moses was the Exodus hero. Moses, a solitary leader, one with his people but set apart. Moses was so close to God that when he died, God himself attended the funeral and God buried him. Uh, we just, a few months ago, came back from Israel. They showed us the tombs of uh, Abraham. They showed us the tombs of Sarah. They showed us the, the tomb of David, uh, great psalmist. Uh, they even showed us the tomb where Jesus uh, was laid. But let me tell you, they were never able to show us where Moses was laid because no one knows where God buried Moses. Moses was an amazing, exceptional man. Moses was a man on a class of his own. He was an extraordinary being. If I was going to give this message a subtitle, I would call it sub Extraordinary Living. Moses was so exceptional that even after he had died, he appeared uh, in the New Testament on the Mount of Transfiguration. After he had died uh, thousands of years, uh, Jesus Christ appears on the Mount of Transfiguration and Moses appeared with him, with Elijah. What a man. What a man. Moses. 
So from the life of Moses, what are some of the things that you're able to glean to make us exceptional people? Or what are the things that you can glean from the life of this great giant that can make you exceptional? Number one, if you're going to be exceptional, if you're going to be extraordinary, you've got to be yourself. You've got to be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. God made you you for a purpose. He made you for a plan. There is nobody who can be like you except you. So the first thing you understand from the life of Moses that you can glean uh, from exceptional people is that you've got to be yourself. Moses had to deal with, the, with this issue from beginning. Don't forget that Moses started with an identity crisis. Moses uh, is born at a time when the Jewish boys were being killed. Now he is rescued and he is born Jewish, but he is brought up in Pharaoh's Egyptian culture and traditions. So he had a, an identity crisis. He is born a Jew, but he knows Egyptian traditions and culture. Uh, he has been removed as a kid from uh, his uh, environment, which he is really wired for, and now he has an identity crisis. I believe with all my spirit, if you're going to be an exceptional person, you've got to really set, sort out this issue and ask yourself really, who am I? Who am I? And I want to ask you this morning, who are you? Who are you, really? I know that some people have lived other people's dreams. I know maybe you are taught you are like this and you should be like this. Uh, but if you're going to be an exceptional person, you have got to sort out the issue of who am I? This is quite an important choice because it will determine the rest of your life. If you can sort out this issue of who you are, you will sort out the rest of your life. Moses would have uh, easily faked his heritage. Moses would have easily just uh, said bye-bye to who he was and lived a life of ease. He would have had an outstanding career. He was in line to be Pharaoh. They were training him to be Pharaoh. They were grooming him to take over. He went to the best universities of the day because he was uh, being trained to be the leader of Egypt. Moses would have had fame and uh, Moses would have had fortune and uh, he had to sort out the issue and uh, had he just faked it that he was Egyptian, he had it made. But if he said he was Jewish, he was going to be humiliated, kicked out of the palace, sent to live with a bunch of slaves for the rest of his life with hard labor. Yet Moses saw his people badly mistreated as slaves and he could not be silent. Moses was a man of character. Moses was a man of integrity. He could not quell his conscience because uh, who you really are will once in a while uh, be irritated to come up when you see the purposes in which God created you to be. And in as much as uh, you have been trying to quell it and you have been trying to keep it down, uh, who you really are will come out. Who you really are. Uh, yeah, he could not sleep in the night. He would wake up and just walk around and toss himself and wonder, really, uh, yes, I'm in the palace, but uh, uh, am I really supposed to be in the palace? Am I, am I really Egyptian? And then that thing was pushing him because he had to sort out. Uh, and some of you will get into that place where you are tossed to and fro. You, you, who you are and where you are don't just... Uh, mix and uh, there's always conflict uh, uh, when uh, you realize who you are and uh, where you are. 